Hi, I'm Kate Reed. I'm a community artist and costume designer based here in Kendall. I'm really excited to be part of Kendall Torchlight this year. So I'm here to show you how to make some bunting to decorate your house, your street, and make Kendall as colourful as it usually is for Torchlight. The first step for making your bunting is to make some paper patterns. And for this, you're going to need some A4 paper, a ruler, pencil and a pair of paper scissors. There are different shapes that you can use for your bunting. The most traditional one is the triangular shape and this can be plain or you might want to put a pattern or an image on it. The first thing you're going to do is to rule a line across the top of the paper. I'm then going to fold the piece of paper in half lengthways. Now with the ruler and the pencil again, I'm going to lay the pencil just where the line that I drew originally is and rule down to the point of the fold. And this line here, the diagonal line, is the one I'm going to cut. So we have a lovely triangular shape with a flat piece that can be folded over to give a good, strong joint to the tape. So we've got our triangular shape pattern, which is brilliant for plain or pattern fabrics. However, you might want your bunting to have a message. You might need to put some letters on it. Now the triangular shape is fine for the letter V, but just try putting an M on it, you will struggle. So we have got an alternative shape, which is a bit more rectangular, fantastic for lettering. So to make a more rectangular shape piece of bunting, I'm going to take my ruler and my pencil and I'm going to rule a line down the side of the paper. I'm then going to rule another line at the bottom, rule across. I'm now going to cut along the long one, but not the bottom one. I'm, going to... I'm then going to fold this in half lengthways. And I'm then going to draw a diagonal line down to the bottom point of the fold. And that diagonal line is the one that I'm going to cut. And that's the shape for the rectangular piece of bunting. So you've got your paper patterns ready, now you need some fabric. You might want to buy some fabric from a fabric shop, you might have some already in that you've never got round to making. And uh, also you might have some old fabric that you could recycle, we're all very much into the recycling. So you might have some old pillowcases, duvet covers, curtains like the example we've got here, which would look fantastic. Um, or you might have some old garments that you no longer wear and uh, we can actually cut those up and use them for our bunting too. That's it. Now, I know there's a fabulous Christmas pudding on there, but I think that's gonna come in useful for something else. So once you've deconstructed your garment, you might find you've got some rather odd shapes to play with. So it does help if you have cut out a few more pattern pieces so that you can try them out and try and get the maximum number of flags out of your garment. I'm going to draw around all of my pieces now so that they're ready to cut out. Now I'm ready to take the paper pattern pieces away and start cutting. So I've cut out four pieces of bunting and I'm going to need probably about 20 to make a good length. So I'd best get cutting. So I've finished cutting out all the flags for my bunting and I now need to attach it to some string or some fabric tape um, so that we can hang it up in the street or in our house. Um, you can use just ordinary string, you can use garden twine. I found this lovely fabric tape at Ragtag Community Scrap Store and I'm going to use that. You're going to need about four metres because you've got to remember to leave enough 
to be able to tie it at both ends nice and securely. I'm now going to try and find the centre of my bunting. I'm going to get the two ends together. That way I can make sure that I've got equal amounts of bunting running along. So I found that is the centre point. So I'm going to put that down on the table. And then I'm just keeping hold of it. And I think I'm going to put one of these pieces in the centre. And I'm going to place it so it's slightly above so that I can fold that over and get a good strong join. Now the pieces don't have to be tightly together. You can afford to have a bit of a space between each flag that makes up your finished bunting. So I have three pieces there ready to attach. Now I've got three different ways that you might want to attach your flags to the tape according to what you've got at home or what you can get hold of. The first one, very, very simple, I've got a stapler. Now to do this, I'm going to fold that over, over to the back of the tape, hold it tight, get the stapler in place. And I'll do that three or four times for each flag to make sure that it's nice and secure. The second method you could try is with glue. This one's just a PVA glue, but any strong glue is uh, absolutely fine for this. And I'm going to put some glue onto the tape and I am going to press it down there. I'm then going to put a little bit on the back as well. Put plenty on, you really want it to be secure and get quite windy in Kendall on torch leg. Fold it over. And I'm just going to use a few paper clips just to hold it in place while the glue dries. The last one I'm going to do by sewing. It'd be a good idea to pop a couple of pins in just to hold it in place. So you can either use a thinner thread in the colour of the fabric so that your stitching doesn't show or alternatively you might want to use a, a thicker thread in a contrasting colour and actually make a feature of your stitching. I'm going to use a contrasting thread, I'm going to use this bright green one. Now you need a really strong knot at the end. I'm going to sew it with this bright green thread doing a running stitch. So we're just coming up through the fabric, down, up, down, up, down till we get to the end. Uh, I've just got to the end of my stitching now, so I'm going to go over the last stitch a couple of times just to make sure it's absolutely secure. If you find it hard getting through three layers of fabric, you could cut off the uh, fold over for the stitched one because stitching is always a lot stronger. And then I'm going to take the thread to the back and cut the extra off. And there's my finished stitched piece of bunting. So we've looked at a way of making really simple bunting which will look fantastic when it's outside your home on torchlight night. We made our paper patterns first, we then looked for unwanted garments or spare fabric, we cut that out and we've attached the flags to the tape with three easy techniques We've done stapling, we've done some gluing, and we've done sewing. So from the beginning of September, you can join me every Thursday night at seven o'clock on Zoom for some bunting making and chat. You might already be an experienced sewer and want to learn some more complicated techniques. 
lining the bunting or the one seam bunting. You might be starting out with sewing and want to learn some techniques for decorating your flags with PK, for instance, perhaps putting some lettering on so that you've got a message. Or you might just want to join us to have a chat and see what we're doing and you'd be very welcome to do that. Don't forget to join us for the Torchlight Celebration from your own home on the 26th of September. Thanks for watching and see you on Zoom. Thank you.